Good morning, little shardies. This morning I woke up inspired. I woke up ready to do this video and I woke up with a new idea for a series uh, called Book Club, where I'm gonna talk about the books that I've read. I've been absolutely shredding through books, just ripping through them, uh, being emotionally wrecked by them just to feel something. And I wanna talk about them. So that's what we're gonna do. I have many books that I want to read. Here's my Goodreads, if anybody wants that. But uh, I feel like there will be no shortage of content with this. I have so many books I've read that I want to talk about. More books to come. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm not a very creative name, but book club it is. I decided. Today, we're starting with Midnight Sun. As promised, I'm literally two months late on this. I don't have the physical book with me because I lent it out to somebody, which everybody should do. Sharing is caring. I'm very excited to talk about this book. I was super pumped for this book for months since I knew it was coming out. I pre-ordered it very early. I finished it like five days after I got it. So I don't know what's taking me so long to do this video. Uh, probably just <laughs> quarantine depression. She's got a hold of us all. Midnight Sun is Twilight from Edward's perspective. When I first got the book, she a thicky, she thick, thick. She, I thought that it was like the entire course of events that happened in the Twilight saga. No, it's literally just Twilight. And the reason why it's so much longer than the original book is because Edward is a little whiny emo boy, which that's why we love him. You know, that's why, that's why we wanted him in middle school. We wanted a whiny little emo boy. Uh, but as a 23 year old, <laughs> I don't, uh, I'm, I'm gonna about to say a controversial thing. About to say a controversial thing, which is that reading this book has made me even more Team Jacob. I've made two videos, two other videos on this channel where I said that I was Team Jacob, which is very brave of me, okay? Almost nobody is Team Jacob. The people that are get absolutely bullied. I'm, I'm willing to take, I'm willing to take, okay? Because that's what I believe in. I think at first that I was doing it to just be like cool um, because I because I was 12. Uh, but I've actually just confirm I've actually just confirmation biased my way into actually believing it and defending it every time it comes up. So I will do that now. Edward in this book is in his head in his inner monologue is like, I know that I should tell Bella this. But if I did tell her, she'd be upset with me. So I'm not. <laughs> That's literally manipulative. Okay, I I can deal with the emo brooding. Okay, I, I would even I would even root for some emo brooding. I love emo brooding. But I don't like being m manipulative. Like, oh, God, that's so just gross. And then he's like, everybody wants to bang me. Ew, no, I get that he's like hot. I really do get that. That's like a big part of the story because like he's hot and Bella's just like, just like every other girl, but not like other girls. Um, But he's, it's too, he's too full of himself. And then he's like, I didn't even notice the waitress who really wanted to bang me. It's like, well, it sounds like you just noticed. You did, you did notice. Like, <laughs> sir, Think less of yourself. All men, think less of yourself. <laughs> Edward is also weirdly misogynistic. Like, is like uh, all the other little teenage female girls are usually so wrapped up in whatever, but Bella likes books. So that's why I like Bella. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no other teenage girl likes books. And then he's like, he literally just rips on Jessica. Jessica's just sitting there minding her own business. Like she's just thinking this stuff in her mind. She's not like going up to Edward and being like, like ogling him. She's just literally minding her own business. And then Edward just wrecks her for it. Like, okay. Okay. So that's why I'm more team Jacob after reading this book. Edward is manipulative. He's weirdly misogynistic. I don't like that. He's old timey. I really do get it. But like, you know, you can adapt. It, that's like in your brain. You can adapt to today. 
uh, or 2005, I guess. <laughs> so maybe, maybe he was not misogynistic for 2005. We've come a long way. Also, his he said that Jacob's thoughts were like pure, and he was just like an innocent boy. So I like that. Um, yeah, Team Jacob for life. I'll say it again. I will, I will take the heat because I can handle it. Okay, I know what I'm about, son. I do want to talk about the meadow scene. Okay, Stephanie Meyer did a really good job at making them very different. So when I first wa- when I first read Twilight, I wasn't under the impression that Bella was one second away from getting murked in the in the meadow. Uh, I guess I just thought it was like romantic and pretty, and I was like, oh, he took her there because it's like a special place to him. Now they can just snuggle in the meadow. No, like. Alice was like, "You, if you go to the meadow, either you will murk her in the field, you'll clap those cheeks, or you'll be fine, and then you guys can live after that. Also, actually, I don't know how to feel about this. Edward, like, kind of knows the future, right? Because he's, like, in Alice's brain. But if you knew the future, I don't know, I feel like, you should tell, Edward should have told Bella, like, that it was, how dangerous it was. Because every day he's like, you shouldn't be around me, it's dangerous to be around me, and boo boo boo. But the meadow was like, you have two outcomes. <laughs> like, there's no other possibilities happening. So he should have told her that. He should have told her that uh, there's a future where I leave and you get wrecked, which we know did happen. But he's just like... I don't know if you should trust humans with that knowledge or what, but especially for the meadow scene, it seems morally right to be like, we're literally going to this point in time. There's only two options. You come out of the meadow or you don't come out of the meadow. Anyway, and then after that, he's just kind of over it. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't really want to kill her now. It's cool. Okay. Oh, the other scene I liked is the biology class scene. Oh, that was so good. I really, <laughs> I really like that. He was like, I can murk all these little children. Oh my gosh, this is a slight tangent, but that's another thing. He keeps calling the other students in the class children. He's like, all these little, little baby, little tiny babies that I'm sitting around, except that one's hot. That baby right there, that little child sitting there, she is hot. I'm in love with her. Like, oh, Stephanie. Stephanie, honey, please. Like, we need to figure out the pedophilia thing. It's not. <laughs> that's twice now. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, okay, that's my tangent about him calling everybody children. The biology scene, when he's like, I could literally, I'll snap all their necks on the left side, and then I'll scoot around and do the right side, and then I can take my time with her. Or I could kill her first, but then I wouldn't be able to save her. And then I could, like, and she's just like, do I smell bad? (laughs) I really like that scene. Overall, loved Midnight Sun, ripped through it. Obviously, I'm a big Twilight gal. Uh, I'm not going to not like it. I did have problems with Edward, our main character, but that's the fun of books, you know? You you are inside a character. You can make judgments about the character, even if they're giving you their justification for stuff. You can still disagree with it. That's why it's fun. I would rate this book one star for the amount of Jacob that's in it. I would rate it three stars for actual quality of the book. I would rate it five out of five stars for being entertaining and taking me out of my quarantine depression for a brief five days. I'm also going to warn you that after you finish the book, you're going to want to watch all the Twilight movies five times in a row. Okay, goodbye. See you next book club.